Putin is a head of state. Do you think that uh, a head of state can just be arrested anywhere? How many crimes have your country committed in Iraq? How many crimes have everyone else who's so vocal today committed in Iraq and Afghanistan? Have you arrested them? go beyond the, the friendship with Russia and in the war I will align with Russia and I will even supply the weapons to Russia because Russia is in a war with, an, with imperialism. This is another part of that controversial interview between the BBC hard talk show host Stephen Sucker uh, with the, some top leaders from South Africa that is the opposition leader uh, EFF uh, Julius Malema and the ANC, which is the ruling party secretary general Afikile. And from that interview, he kept asking them about the relationship between South Africa and Russia and whether South Africa gave Russia weapons. And their answer is what is creating all this buzz across the world because the answer is straightforward, is a, an answer that makes sense actually, because this even goes ahead to show that. Africa is actually tired and sick of this uh, narrative from the West about Russia. That's why you are seeing the foreign minister of Russia today is in Kenya to meet the president there. Uh, before that, I think he was in Ethiopia. After that, he's going to South Africa for a meeting of uh, foreign ministers from BRICS countries. So this goes to show that Africa actually is not interested with what the West wants them to do. And they are more interested with working with Russia the same way they would work with any other country. Now, I want to play the remainder part of that interview between the ANC Secretary General Fikile and this uh, BBC journalist. You can watch it and listen to what he said when he was asked those questions. South Africa is on strike. Investors now are very negatively disposed to this country. They've lost faith and they've lost trust. For outside investors, they look at the foreign policy, diplomatic orientation of South Africa. They see that right now you are locked in a tense dispute with the United States because the US sees you as deeply sympathetic to Vladimir Putin's Russia, despite the Russian all-out invasion of Ukraine. We have explained those issues. Our government is dealing with those matters with the United States of America. We are not locked in any dispute of any form. And uh, we have none aligned when it comes to the conflict in Russia. And uh, that is the line we're pursuing. Well, the we, for, for we, a start, we, the U.S. ambassador here in South Africa said that he had evidence that weapons had been loaded I met, onto I a met, Russian... I met, I met with him yesterday. He apologized for being overzealous and uh, saying things that he shouldn't have said. Yeah, you, you say and he's apologized. He, we have not heard him himself issue an apology. Well, I am saying to you, he have apologized. I met him right here in the Revolutionary House yesterday. Your government has, has launched an investigation about that alleged weapons it shipment. Is, it is Can you categorically guarantee to me here and now, as the head of the ANC, that no weapons were put on board that vessel? Our government has reassured the ANC that uh, there is in nothing to the, to the truth about weapons uh, being exchanged between our countries. I, I, I phrased my question carefully. Can you now categorically say no weapons were put on I, board I, that I, Russian I, ship? I, I, I've explained uh, to you that uh, there is an a, a action that has been taken by our government in terms of investigating. South Africa is a, a treaty member of the International Criminal Court. If Putin comes here in August as planned, your government will be obliged to arrest him. As head of the ANC, do you believe your government should and indeed will arrest if Vladimir Putin? If it was Putin? according to the ANC, we will want President Putin to be here even tomorrow. You would? To come to, come, to, come to our country. But, you would uh, welcome Vladimir Putin here of right course now. We will welcome, a man who is being investigated for war crimes by the International Criminal Court. We will Criminal welcome Court. him to come here as part and parcel of BRICS, but we know that we are constrained by the ICC in terms of uh, doing that. Putin is a head of state. Do you think that uh, a head of state can just be arrested anywhere? How many crimes have your country committed in Iraq? How many crimes? Have everyone else who's so vocal today committed in Iraq and Afghanistan, have you arrested them?
You, you, know, you know the impact that You're this stand of yours... You're making a lot of noise about putting in state of working for peace between Ukraine and Russia, and you failed to resolve the war. Where are the weapons of mass destruction? Tony Blair went to Iraq and claimed that there are weapons of mass destruction. Did you see anybody standing against that in the United Kingdom and Britain? More than uh, millions of people have died in Iraq and yeah. Afghanistan, and there are no weapons of mass destruction. We know what the war is about Mr. Secretary General. between Russia and Ukraine. We want peace. That's what is important, so that the world can thrive. And organs and institutions of the world that institute world peace must not be conspicuous by their silence in deciding right. decisively. We, we, we don't have much time left. I, just want, I want to bring it back to uh, domestic South African politics before we end. Um, you know, I think this notion of international rules is very comfortable for some people to use when it suits them, but they don't believe in international rules when it doesn't suit them because they don't apply international rules or law equally in all circumstances. So you can't say because Ukraine has been invaded uh, that suddenly sovereignty is important, but it was never important for Palestine. Mm -hmm. It's very peculiar. Mm -hmm. If you believe in international law truly, mm -hmm. then wherever sovereignty is infringed, it must apply. Mm -hmm. And this is the point we've been making, that we use the framework of international law unequally, depending on who is affected. And we are arguing that that must change. And one of the interesting changes that has occurred is the sudden movement, because Russia has invaded Ukraine, that we say, OK, let's not allow the Security Council to just have the veto and let it pass. We take it to the General Assembly. When some of us had been calling for the General Assembly to have a greater say, we never enjoyed support. But suddenly today, see, that's where international law begins to mean nothing, because for some we see it as a cheating, and for others, we see it as a benefit. So our argument is let's revise the international uh, multilateral system to ensure that we observe that post-1948 has arrived. <laughs>